Hi everyone, welcome to Python Osmosis, episode 18, a screencast that brings you up to speed on the ins and outs of using Python. I'm Ryan Shea, and in this episode we'll be talking about list comprehensions. So we learned about some functional tools, map, filter, reduce, and those can be a great way of turning a list into something else, another list for example. But a clearer way can be something called list comprehensions. A list comprehension is a way of just turning a list into another list in line without resorting to lambda or anything too complex. So let's create a, create a list here called fresh fruit and we'll create banana in there. Notice I'm putting some spaces here. And sometimes there's spaces at the beginning, sometimes at the end, sometimes both. So now I have a fresh fruit list and I want to turn that into a new list, a new list that doesn't have these, these leading and trailing spaces. Now this can be easier to read from right to left. Basically I'm creating a loop. This is what I would do more verbosely by saying for weapon in fresh fruit uh, print weapon dot strip but I'm doing this in line it's going to return a list that's what these square brackets are at the end so for weapon in fresh fruit strip on that weapon banana loganberry passion fruit and you see a list with the square brackets was returned so that can be pretty useful let me show you another example so let's create a new list with two, four, six. And let's say I want to do some math on that list. Let's uh, multiply it each item times three. So I have my list vec. I'm going to loop through each item in vec, setting it equal to x. And I'm going to multiply that times three and return the result. And it does just what we'd think. It returns a list with six, 12, and 18 in there. Now you can also have conditions. Uh, let's say I only wanted to return that 3 times x if x is greater than 3. So that would rule out 2. 4 is greater than 3 and 6 is greater than 3. So let's see what's returned. Exactly. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12 and, and 3 times 18 or 3 times 6 is 18. Now if you change this to less than 2, for example, a condition where there's, there's no number in VEC where this matches, 2 is uh, equal to 2, not, not less than 2, we get an empty list back. Now you're not just limited to getting one single return for each loop. So let's get rid of this condition here. Let's say I wanted to get a list back of x, x squared. So it's going to go through each item in VEC and then return a list, x, x squared. So this will end up being a list of lists. And indeed, that's what we get. Now, uh, one interesting thing to note about returning a list is that normally if you take off the square brackets Python assumes that this is a tuple and it will return a tuple so we would think that these that these square brackets here would turn into our open and close parentheses but unfortunately we get invalid syntax basically not specifying a set of parentheses on this confuses Python so if you do want a tuple returned in a list comprehension just use your open and close parentheses and it will return what you'd expect now we're not limited to just going through one loop. We can actually have a loop within a loop um, within a list comprehension. Let me show you an example. Let's create a new list here. Vec1 equals 2, 4, 6. And Vec2 is going to equal 4, 3, negative 9. Back two, and now we could say 
a list comprehension x times y for x in vec1 for y in vec2. Now we're starting to get a little, a little bit more confusing. This is a loop within a loop for x in vec1, for y in vec2. When it gets down to the bottom, it's got an x, it's got a y. Multiply those out and return what you get. And in this case, you see obviously we get more values than just three that was contained in, in vec1 or vec2. This is the, the total of that loop within a loop. You can get fairly complex with these list comprehensions. Um, Here's another example. Let's do, actually, okay. Let's do vec1 of i times vec2 of i for i in range length vec1. Okay, so go through the range of the length of vec1, 0, 1, 2, and pull out i, whatever that iterator is, and then multiply that item in vec1 times that item in vec2, and that's exactly what we get. 2 times 4 is 8, 4 times, four times 3 is 12, 6 times negative 9 is negative 54. Fairly useful. And here's very complex. You can have functions inside of here. Let's do 355 by 113.0 i for i in range 1, 6. So look at all the functions that we're using in here. We have range, we have round, we have string, and we get strings back for each of those rounded floating point calculations. Now if you have the stomach for it, there's something called nested list comprehensions. So let's create a matrix One, two, three. Actually, I'm doing this wrong. Okay, let's do one, two, three. So there's one row four, five, six. There's another row seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we've created this list of lists. And let's say we wanted to swap around the rows with the columns. We wanted to end up with 147, 258, 369. How might we do this? Well, we can use a list comprehension. So let's take a look. This actually gets very confusing. Okay, so loop through this list, 0, 1, 2, pulling out the number, 0, and return the row of that number, the 0th item of the row in the matrix. And then go through again and pull out the first row in the matrix, I'm sorry, the first column in the matrix, and then go through again and pull out the, the third. And it gives you back just what you'd think. 147, 258, 369. Now, a more verbose way of writing this up and probably more clear is for i in 0, 1, 2, for row in mat, print row of i, and then Make that a little bit prettier. And you see 1472583693. So that is what we wanted to get. In fact, you can do this a lot more easily 
and there's a built-in function called zip. And we can say zip and unpack the list of lists, mat, into that. And it actually groups multiple lists together into tuples. And as you see, this does the exact same thing, except it makes it a lot easier. That's all for now. This screencast is directly inspired by the official Python tutorial by Guido Van Rossum at python.org.